weekend so we have a long weekend Hoot. <laughs> and in honor of family things we thought we would pay a little homage to some of our favorite family movies the despicable me collection <laughs> i thought it would be a riot if we made ourselves a minion today these guys are hilarious they really crack us up and there's a whole new movie coming out this summer and we can't wait <laughs> so let us go down to the lab and make ourselves some minions in order to make our minion, we are going to need a primarily worsted weight yarn. So this is just your basic red heart. You're not going to need very much of either. I've got a nice bright canary yellow and a nice cheerful blue. You're going to need small amounts each of black, gray, and white. And this doesn't have to be worsted weight. It can be a little bit skinnier, just sort of scraps of anything you've got lying around, but not chunky. It has to be worsted weight or skinnier. Uh, you're going to need scissors, a yarn needle, and you're going to need two different kinds of hooks. So you're going to need your uh, 4.25 or a 4.5 millimeter hook, a G6, um, or um, whatever the equivalent to the 4.5 millimeter hook is. So that's going to be for the main body. And for the eyes, you're going to need uh, something just a bit smaller. So I'm going to use a size 3. And that is what I'm going to make the eye and the goggle with. So just a slightly smaller hook than the one you're going to make the body with. And let's, let's get started. We're going to start at the top of our minion and work our way down. So we're going to begin with yellow and we're going to make a cinch circle. So we're going to wrap our yarn around our fingers and you can do this any way you're comfortable, but I like to grab my yarn with my hook and then chain one. And there is my cinch circle. Into our circles, we're going to work eight single crochet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Grab your little short tail and pull it nice and tight. And that cinches up our circle. We're going to work in the round, so we're not joining our rows with a slip stitch. We are just going to work directly into the next stitch and keep on going. If you need to mark your um, start point, you can put a little safety pin or a stitch marker in here, or you can use my method and I will show that to you in a quick second. But first, we're going to get into uh, row two and we're going to put two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. And that will bring us from 8 to a total of 16. So when you get to the end of row 2, just double count your stitches. And make sure you have 16 of them. 4, 16. All right, that's the end of row 2. Row 3 is another row of increase. We're going to work directly into the first stitch again, or the next stitch, so not the first, just the next. We're going to work two single crochet into the next stitch, and one single crochet into the stitch after that. And that's the pattern. We're going to repeat two, one, two, one, all the way around for a total of 24 stitches. Two, 23, 24. Alright, that's 24. Now you can always double check by counting all the way around. You should have 24. And just in case you're not using the stitch marker method, this is how you determine where your start point is. So it's not important right now. It will only be important after we've done a few rows. But this little bump 
right here so there's the center where I started and this little bump where all of my work starts to spiral out into my second and third rows this little bump is what I call my North Star and that is what I know is my start point or I use that as my start point I can put a safety pin there to make it a little more obvious or I can just look for the bump and I like to navigate using that little bump so from here on out we're going to single crochet straight that means that you're just going to single crochet around and around and around in circles you're going to have 24 stitches in each row and we're going to do 10 more rows for a total of 13 so you've done rows 1 through 3 already and you're just going to single crochet straight all the way around for a total of 10 more rows and just remember you want to count your stitches make sure you always have 24 and if you get lost just whoop, there's my bump look for your bump and you know that's where your start point is okay and I will see you guys at the end of another 10 rows okay I'm just nearing the end of row 13 so I've done uh, three increased rows those were the first three rows and I've done 10 straight rows of single crochet I've come all the way around to find my start point and I use this little bump as my start point and I want to make sure that all of my stitches are in alignment so I'll put in one more and then I count so there's row one is the center two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen total of thirteen rows and that's it for the yellow so we're going to slip stitch into the stitch next to the one we just worked grab our scissors and just snip our yarn that's it for the yellow for now and just fasten off grab that little end pull it through your working loop give it a little tug done and now we're going to join the blue and I find joining a color is easiest if you make a slip knot so just make a slip knot any way you're comfortable make sure it's not too tight there we go and I'm going to join it in the same stitch that I slip stitched and fastened off in so I'm going to join right there for a couple of reasons. One, that's where I fastened off. And I'm joining with a single crochet here. So there we go. And two, it's right in alignment with my little bump. So I like to start at the same start point with I'm changing colors. And now we're going to single crochet all the way around. And when you get to the end of your first row of blue, uh, I think you should chain, you should just check your stitch count you want to make sure you still have 24 if you're totally confident fine um, but always double check especially when you're changing colors because you do have something that looks a little bit like a false stitch because of having cast off the other color so it's always just a good idea to count and in total we're going to single crochet for another three rows so you're going to have three straight rows of blue single crochet before we start to um, decrease and round round up his little bum basically so as you come to the end of your first row of the blue just double check so I'm going to leave this last little stitch on worked for a second and I'm going to count so there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four so that this little thing that looks like a stitch that's a false stitch that's from having cast off your yarn or fastened off your yarn so I'm just gonna go ahead and work into that first single crochet that I joined the blue with and I'm gonna keep right on single crocheting in every stitch around until I've got three rows of blue okay I'm just finishing off my third row of straight single crochet and I can do it tell that by two ways there's my my north star or my my start point 
that I use. But there's also an obvious place where I joined the yarn. So I just want to even up those rows and make sure that I've got three even rows of straight blue single crochet, which I do. Starting to look a little bit minion-like, eh? So now we're going to start to decrease. And we're going to decrease by single crocheting the first two stitches together. So you draw up a loop in the next stitch and draw up a loop in the stitch next to that so that you have three loops on your hook. Then you wrap and bring through all three loops. So that's single crochet two together. You're going to single crochet into the next stitch and then you're going to decrease again. So the pattern is single crochet two together, single crochet one, single crochet two together, single crochet one. And you're going to work that pattern all the way around this row and that's going to bring you back down to 16 stitches in total. Okay, we're down to 16 stitches, we're starting to fold in our bottom here. We're going to decrease uh, again and that's going to be single crochet two together all the way around. So we're basically doing the reverse of our increase rows. So now we're single crocheting two stitches together all the way around in this row and that's going to bring our stitch count down from 16 back to 8. Alright, we're back down to 8 stitches. So pull up on your loop, give yourself a bit of space, and now you want to stuff your little minion. So grab your stuffing, and remember to stuff in small amounts so that you don't get a lumpy looking amigurumi. You don't want to overstuff it, but you do want to make sure that it's pretty firm, but more importantly, nice and even. So I think that that needs just a little bit more. There. Okay. Now we're going to cinch this hole shut. So I recommend that you try and keep your finger or keep a thumb or something on the stuffing. We're going to single crochet two together. And we're going to do it one more time. So single crochet two together. There we go. And now you should have sort of six stitches left, but don't worry, this doesn't have to be totally exacting. We're going to slip stitch now through all of the posts. So this is the post of a stitch. It's not quite, this is the stitch, and this is the post. It's sort of the little, um, it's the vertical thing that sits underneath the stitch. So we're going to slip stitch around that because that will actually help to cinch the circle shut a lot quicker. And you're going to go through or slip stitch around every single post in that last row until you get back to the beginning and then you're going to fasten off, so snip a fair length of yarn and pull it back through your working loop. Give it a nice little tug. And then you're going to take your yarn needle and you're going to thread up your tail here of yarn. And just for aesthetics sake, you're going to weave it in around all these little stitches uh, making sure that if you see any little gaps where you can kind of see the stuffing through some of the spaces between your stitches, you just want to sort of pull a little tighter through those stitches just to kind of help cinch up some of those last little spaces. It's, um, it's a nice little detail and it helps keep all of your stuffing from flying out. So go ahead and weave in your tail. You can cinch that some of those 
spaces and we'll move on to the next bit. We're going to move on to the eye now and we're going to start with the white. So we're going to use our smaller hook, grab our white yarn, and we're going to start with a cinch circle. And into that cinch circle you're going to single crochet four. One. And it might be a bit fiddly so just be patient with yourself. Two, three, and four. You're going to cinch your circle shut and you're going to work directly into the next stitch. So we're not joining with a single a slip stitch. We're going to just work directly into the next stitch and you're going to put two single crochet in each stitch around and you're going to have a total of eight. And one. eight. All right. You're going to join with a slip stitch to the next stitch, trim your yarn, and fasten off by pulling that tail back through your working loop. Give it a nice tight tug. And if you worked over your yarn like I did, you can just trim that little tail. There we go. Now this is technically the eye, but it needs a pupil. Grab your black yarn and cut a length, not too long, and I am going to do what's called a French knot. So you're going to thread your yarn up a little, grab your eyeball, bring your yarn up through the very middle, and leave some tail out the back. Now this can be a little tricky, and I imagine there's a couple ways it might be easier to do this, but what I like to do is to lie my needle down on top of my eye, and pull up some slack so that I've got enough yarn to work with. And then I'm going to wrap the yarn around the needle. That's one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to try and hold it tight. And I'm going to pull the needle through those wrapped little bits of yarn. There we go and go back back through to the back side of our little eyeball and that is a French knot and I think a French knot makes a pretty decent pupil <laughs> so all you have to do now is take your two ends and tie them in a knot like that and then just trim them because the eyeball back is not going to show. There we go. So there's our eyeball so far. It looks pretty minion-like, I would think. Now we're going to join the gray. Grab your gray yarn and we're going to join it with a single crochet. So we're going to make a slip knot and we're still using our smaller hook. There we go. And grab your eyeball. <laughs> your yarn one, that is, not your actual eyeball. And you're going to, I like to pick the, the sort of the single crochet right next to the stitch that I fastened off in. Uh, just so I can kind of tank, tack down the other working little string as I go. So you leave your loop, your um, slip, slip knot on your hook, grab a loop by pulling it up through your stitch, and just yarn over and pull through both. And that's how you cast on uh, with a single crochet. So now you're going to work another single crochet into that same space that you cast on with, or that you joined it with. And make sure all your little bits in the back don't get pulled through to the front. And you're going to work two, one, two, one, all the way around so that you have a total of 12 stitches. So 12 gray stitches. That's three, 12. All right, if you've done 
all 12, make sure you count. You might have a little gap here and that's fine because remember there's always like a false stitch whenever you uh, fasten off and then add another color. There's going to be like a little extra thing there. Just ignore it. But if you're unsure, count. You want to have 12 stitches all the way around. You're going to work directly into that first single crochet that you made. And now you're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So you're still going to have 12 stitches when you're finished. All right, it's starting to look like an eyeball inside a goggle. And you can, if you're using slightly thicker yarn, stop on the second row of gray. But if you're using really thin yarn, for example, that's one of the scraps you grabbed, and you think that it could be a little thicker, go ahead and add another row. But if you're unsure, grab your minion and just plunk that eyeball down in the middle and take a look at it. I think that's far enough out. And I'm going to put a little stuffing in that just to make sure. So, because I'm content with that, I'm going to slip stitch into that next stitch and I'm going to fasten off. So, snip my yarn. Now I'm done with the gray. Pull that little tail all the way back. Yeah. And I'm just going to hide that. <laughs> now you can cut a great a length of gray yarn and you can sew it all the way around so that it's secured to the face of your minion so for this you're going to want your yarn needle and you're going to want a length of gray now you could have cut a long tail when you fastened off like i normally do or you can do this either way is fine thread up a needle and I like to, I'm going to ignore this, I like to just pull it through the first stitch that I'm going to work and tie a knot there we go and I'm just going to work both those little tails into my eyeball as I go but I'm going to start by sewing it on. So I'm going to pick a back. There's my back. And this is my front. Good. All right. I like that right there. And now I'm going to start sewing it on. So I pick up a stitch on the body and I pick up a stitch on the side of the goggle. And I pick up another stitch on the body and another stitch on the side of the goggle. And I just hold it in place with my thumb and just gently pick up stitches and work my way all the way around. I'm going to stop every once in a while and make sure it's on straight. All right, when I'm halfway around, or maybe a little more than halfway, I'm going to pause and I'm going to put some stuffing in there. Just because I want the eye, not a lot of stuffing, just a little bit. I want the eye to sort of stick out a little bit. Like I don't want it to be sort of squishy. Yeah, that's good. And I'm just going to finish sewing it up. All right, and once I feel like I've got that on nice and firmly, I'm just going to pull it out to well, one side or the other, put a little knot in, and then just weave it into the body. Just one little tiny knot, kind of like you're fastening off. Make it nice and tight so that it doesn't show. And I'm going to weave it into the body. There. Remember, always pause to give your amigurumi a little squish. Make sure that everything sort of sits where you want it to. All right, his eyeball's on. Now we just need the bib for his overalls and the goggle strap. And we're going to start with the goggle strap. You're going to take your black 
yarn. And you can choose to use either your small hook here or your large hook here. And I'm going to use my large hook just because it's not too important and I'm comfortable using my large hook. So I'm going to create a slip knot. And it doesn't have to be super fancy. So just a slip knot. I'll get him out of the way. And now we're going to chain 20. 1, 2, 3, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So there's a length of 20. And just to make sure it fits, I'm going to hold it on one side. And nope, looks like I need to put in a few more. So 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. Pause. Start again. Remember how I like to do things in sets of 10s? So I always do sets of 10s. So I started with 20. I added 5. And add a couple more. I'm almost there. Basically what I want to do is make sure I've chained a length that will reach from one side of his goggle all the way around his head to the other side. So it looks like two more chains ought to do it. There. I'm going to cut a long thread this time because I'm actually going to sew the goggle strap on with that long thread. There we go. And that's sort of a neat little thing you can do if you're using yarn that's not the same size as the rest of it. You know that it's the shape you want. What you want is a strap. And if the strap needs to be 30 single cro or 30 chains, it can be 30. If the strap needs to be 15, it can be 15. You're going for a look. So there. That will definitely reach. So now what I'm going to do I'm going to thread up the long tail of my Google, sorry Google. <laughs> my my goggle strap. My googling goggle. And I'm going to start on this side. So start on the side where your long string is. I'm just going to tack it down right at the very corner. I'm even going to pick up underneath the stitch where I, I secured my, my goggle to my minion. And I'm going to lay it flat, pick up top of the chain, and I'm going to keep this strap flat. I'm going to slowly pick up one side, so like a little stitch on one side, and a side of chain. And then I'm going to pick up a stitch on the other side, and a side of chain. And I'm going to keep stopping and making sure that my strap's in the right place. And I'm going to pick up a stitch and a piece of chain. And a stitch. And a piece of chain. And I'm going to do that all the way around until I get to the other side of the goggle. Once you get around to the other side, you're just going to secure your last chain. And maybe secure it a couple times. And you want to make sure that you run your, your stitch underneath, I don't know if you can see that, underneath where you secured your the other side of your goggle. And I'm just going to do that a couple times and then I'm going to knot these two pieces together. I'm going to trim my yarn. I'm going to knot these together. And this is the short tail from where I started my chain length. And then I'm just going to pull both those little edges into the body of my minion using my yarn needle. So now he's got his goggle strap on. <laughs> Now he just needs his bib. We're going to switch back to our larger needle now, our larger hook I should say. We're switching back to our blue and we're going to chain a length of six. So we start with a slip knot. One, two, three, four, five, six. And why six? Because I want to create 
a little bib. It's not too much bigger than his goggle. And six stitches is the width that I want. So, because we're single crocheting back and forth, in order to maintain a stitch count of six stitches, you chain a foundation row of six, and then you add one to be your turning chain. We're going to single crochet into the second chain from the hook, and we're going to single crochet in each stitch across. And we want to have a total stitch count of six. So when you get to the end, always count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Good. Chain one for a turning chain. Turn your work and single crochet in each stitch all the way back. And you will have a second row with six more stitches in it. Now, how is that looking? Is that bib-like enough? I would say yes. So, with a worsted weight yarn, two rows of six stitches each looks like a big enough apron <laughs> on the, the bib of these overalls for me. So now I'm going to cut a fairly long length fasten off and I'm going to take my yarn needle and sew all the way around this little bib just to put it in place right along the top of the edge of the overalls and right in alignment with his goggle. Once you've got his bib all sewn on, it's time to make his overalls. And you're going to make those in the same way that you made the strap for his goggle. So we're going to chain a length just big enough that we can sew it down so that it looks like it's going over his arms. So we're going to chain, I like to start with 10, or sets of 10, and I'm going to start with 10 in this case. So start with a slip knot and chain 10, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Now I can already tell 10 is not going to be long enough. So, oh, well, that might be close. Might be close. Two more. So I'm going to single crochet. I'm sorry, I'm going to chain 12. So a base row of 12. And I'm going to make two of those because he's going to have two straps. And I'm going to leave enough string on the end so that I can sew it down in the exact same manner that I did the strap on his goggles. So that's one chain length of 12. And once you figure out what chain length is best for you, you want to make sure that it arcs. So arcs up and over, enough room so that there's a place to put his arm. So pretend you're going over an arm socket. And once you've got a length that works best for you, make two of them the same. All right, there are my two lengths of chain 12 with enough string that I can sew them on. And I'm going to start doing that by sewing it at the corner. So the top corner of his overalls and then just laying it down and <laughs> stitching it down as I go. I'm going to make this one and then I'm going to sew on the second one. Now we're going to make his arms. You're going to make two of these. We're going to start with the black yarn. We're going to make a slip knot with our larger hook. And you're going to chain four. So we're going to chain four. One, two, three, four. Four chains. You're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. And slip stitch into the last chain. Now that might be a little tricky, so just be patient with yourself. Now, get a grip on the bottom of it. Chain three more. One, two, three. You're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. And slip stitch into that first chain you made that you ended that first 
finger into. And you can see we've got two little fingers going here. Get a grip on the bottom of it again. Chain three more. One, two, three. Slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. Slip stitch into the third chain from the hook. And slip stitch back into that first chain you made. Hope you can see that there. And what you want to achieve is something that looks a bit like a chicken foot or a, I wouldn't dare call that a clover, but <laughs> something like a chicken foot. That's it. And you fasten off, snip your yarn, pull that back through the loop. It's easier to weave in some of your little short ends before you move forward. You might want to do that. You're going to make two of these. So you know what, I'm just going to weave a couple of the little pieces in and then snip off the rest. There we go. So that's a hand. You're going to want to make two of those. And then you're going to take your yellow yarn, make another slip knot with your yard hook, your large hook, <laughs> and you're going to join your yellow yarn in that larger center stitch, or the, the big center um, slip knot or the, the hole that's there. Join it with a slip stitch. So just pull up a loop and pull it right through the loop that you had on your hook. Chain five. One, two, three, four, five. And then you're going to chain one more. So it's like a turning chain. And you're going to slip stitch into the second chain from the hook the third chain from the hook, the fourth chain from the hook, the fifth chain from the hook, and into the last chain. And just to secure this, you're going to slip stitch back into that same place that you joined your yarn. Snip your yarn. Be careful to fasten off uh, not around the not around one of your fingers. You want to make sure you do this sort of to the back. And then you can knot those little strings together if you want and weave them in. And that's what one of your arms is going to look like. So go ahead and make two of those. Now we're going to make his feet. We're going to take our blue yarn. We're going to take our large hook. We're going to start with a cinch circle. And into that circle, we're going to single crochet eight, just like we did when we started our minion. Two, eight, three. Cinch our circles shut. We're going to work directly into the next stitch without joining. So we're going to single crochet and we're going to keep single crocheting straight. So there's no increasing here. We're just going to single crochet all the way around so that row two has a complete stitch count of eight as well. And you're going to do this for one more row after that. So you're going to have a total of three rows at eight single crochet uh, round. All right, so when you've finished your second, or your, sorry, your third row, so you have the beginning row, second and third row, all with eight stitches, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch to close it off. Fasten off with a fairly long string because that's what you're going to sew your foot to the bottom of your minion with. You want to make two of these. Ta -da! And you're going to sew them to the bottom of your minion, right sort of in the middle, evenly spaced. And you're going to add a little bit of stuffing just like you did when you put on the goggle. So you're going to sew your two feet on just like you did as you sewed on your goggle and you get three quarters of the way around. Give it a little bit of stuffing or some beans if you like. Finish sewing it shut and then you can sew on your arms. Once you've got his feet on, you're ready to put on his arms. 
So you just want to grab your yarn needle and thread up a nice decent length of yellow yarn. And you're going to start by anchoring your yarn somewhere right around where you want to sew on your first arm. So just underneath the arc of the strap of the overalls. Just tie it on. You're going to weave in your ends later so it doesn't matter. Grab your first arm and bring your yarn needle up through the underside of the first stitch or the top stitch up there and then just sew it by going through a stitch on the body and then back through that same stitch on the arm. Just do that once or twice. It doesn't have to be on there too terribly strong. Then you're going to take your needle and you're going to go all the way through to the other side of your minion. And you're going to do the exact same thing with the other arm. So pick up a stitch on your minion and run your yarn needle through the arm and pick up a stitch and do the same thing. There we go. And just to make sure it's on, I like to run my needle back through the body. Try and come out in roughly the same place that I put it in. There we go. Make sure I'm not catching anything. Not my short end and my long end together. There we go. Trim. And I can even just stick my hook in and grab both those ends and pull them up into the body. There you go! And now your minion is ready to do your bidding. Me, 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 me. Me? <laughs> so there you go! <laughs> One pint-sized minion, ready to do your bidding and keep you very amused. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching everybody. I hope you had a lot of fun today and I hope you're doing something with your friends and family on this lovely family day weekend. Please remember to like and subscribe and share with your crafty friends. And also you can follow me on Etsy and Facebook and Pinterest and Instagram and Google Plus, and we will see you again very soon for another Jaded Stitches show. Thanks so much. Bye. Wee 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 wee. Oh.